Yeah. We're live. How's it going, guys? Welcome to Basecamp, and we got the legend here in my shop right now, Ryan Moore. In the legend shop. I guess. Yeah, you're actually winning me right I'm now. Get, I'm getting there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what are we doing? This is going to be an awesome live stream. We're demoing a future class that we're actually putting together, which is an in-depth course about how to perfect or command your underbase. So we were kind of talking back and forth. I've been communicating with me, but actually never met you in person. Yeah, until it's, the first time. it's been awesome. And we were like, we should do something fun. I want to come up there, but it'd be great to do something a little bit more than just popping in and saying hi. So you came up with a live stream idea. Yeah, so we were talking about you know somehow doing a class, maybe sharing some of the screen print knowledge we have, and uh, it seems like the most common question that comes up is you know how to do an underbase properly, or some people skipping an underbase altogether. So we want to fix that for you guys, and we got a badass course coming, uh, Q1 2024. Uh, but for now, we're going to give you guys some pretty good tips for free right here on YouTube. Yeah, it's going to be the highlights of what we're going to cover. So this is called Base Camps Basics Live. Yeah, basically. And then we're going to be covering tools that you can use in the live printing process to matter your setup on a manual press and an automatic press, uh, different mesh sizes and different things that you can do to perfect that under base from just experience that we've learned throughout the years. So, yeah, ready to get going? Yeah, let's do this. So the first thing that we're going to talk about, oh, we got to introduce our CC, can of corn, also known as our MC. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, okay. what's up? Hey, how's it going? <laughs> what's up? If you got questions, send them my way. I'll stream. I'll I'll review them, you know, don't get crazy. I know, don't, you know, show my guys love, you know how it is. Yeah, so he's gonna be filtering the questions coming in, shouting us out. Anything to highlight before we start? Any questions Questions out of the gate? Uh, no. Really right now, you know, for the most part, you guys are just goats, you know? Uh, okay, you know, okay thank you. <laughs> All right, so just shout those out. Also, we might, might need to help uh, us on the rock press. Me, me on the rock press when we get over there, so. I'm waiting, I'm hoping Ryan prints a pallet live right now. I got the Sharpie <laughs> ready, <laughs> but I'm not gonna do it. I haven't, no, no platins have been printed we'll this see. entire week, and it's been a really good week, so. Except I, we almost burnt my shop down last night. <laughs> Should we tell that story more <laughs> over by the stand so, Yeah, we'll yeah. tell that story a little bit later. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, it's been a really good week. Thank you so much. It's been awesome to meet you. Yeah, and. Man. We've, I've learned uh, several tips already from Lee, and it's been a really, really good week. So thank you to Richard from the Roundup team for coming up here, from Ed, Ed Lee's uh, videographer over here, and then Can of Corn for making this all happen, and thank you all for watching. So let's rock, let's go. So I guess we will start with uh, ink modulation. That is probably one of the most important things when it comes to laying down a nice underbase. So there's a couple ways to do it. Of course, there is the entry level way. We've got a drill over here, Definitely um, don't do this. Don't yeah. do it by hand. Mixing by hand. Not going to work. Not a good idea. It's not fun. You'll kill your shoulders very, very quickly. So one of the easiest ways to get into it is just use a drill. And what's on here right now, of course, is covered in ink. It's very difficult to see. But this is a just epoxy mixing bit that I got off Amazon. You can buy packs of like five or ten of these for very, very cheap, like five, ten bucks. Um, and you can run this thing in the ink. And uh, if we put this overlay on screen right now, you can see you just got to kind of work it around a little bit. You know, very, very simple. It's not difficult running around for maybe like a minute or two, being gentle, let the drill do the work. And once you see that ink kind of get whipped up to, you know, a whipped cream-like state, then uh, that's what you're looking for. Your ink is ready to print at that point. Yeah, one of the things that really makes a big difference is to making sure that ink is flowing through the screen and because it will change as you're pressed, especially on automatic press. So getting it in that Huge. fluid state first, we're actually gonna test that in a second. Uh, but we use two inks in this course. We use the Wilflex Amazing Bright Tiger, and we use the Bolt. Yep. So how are, we, how are we modulating the Bolt over so here? So yeah, I'm a Bolt White user. I use Bolt White in my shop every single day. And of course, I got the brand new Revolve Ink over here. This thing is incredible, worth every single penny. Um, this is very simple. You just basically flick it on and let this thing do the work for you. You just set it up, let it run while you're setting up your job, whatever, and then we'll switch over to this little uh, on-screen thing where you can see like it mixes up this ink so perfect in a nice little ball and it just comes out of there ready to print every single time. It's like having an extra set of hands in the shop basically. Do you typically run it on the outside mix? Yeah, I kind of like to scrape the outside of the bucket and push it inward, but if I'm mixing ink with this thing, I'll run it the opposite direction. Yeah. And start at about half speed or so? Yeah, I'll usually start it off about half speed and then I like to have a certain temperature with my ink. Um, I'll actually sit there and look at it with the temperature gun to know when it's ready. So I typically like mine to run around 70 degrees. That's when I know it's ready to go on press. So I'll start it off at about half speed and let it get worked in a little bit. And then for the last couple of minutes, I'll turn it up to about 
at two thirds speed about there, and then that gets it right into the pocket for me for that 70 degrees. Nice. All right, so we are going to move actually, the first thing we're gonna change positions over here, we're gonna put two inks in press. We're gonna put a bolt white right out of the bucket. Yep. And we're gonna put this, which you just modulated, maybe let it run. Yeah, maybe let's let this run a couple minutes. Like, okay. There we go. There we go. So, and then we're gonna, you're gonna print it. Yeah, we'll do a split fountain print with ink right out of the bucket versus ink that's been modulated, and uh, we'll see what happens. I've never done this before. We're yeah. doing it live, so. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, so let's kick over to press. Yeah, let's kick over. Hey, to... Zach, could you grab me a spatula? Okay. So, we good on change cameras? First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna slot. Look, I got it. This is, Lee, do you have your camera here? I do. You gotta see so, this ink. This let's, is uh... crusty. Crusty. Let's switch over to my handheld camera. If you have a look at this, this ink is, you know, <laughs> you ain't ready to print this. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is on this side, this is just unmodulated ink right out of the bucket. And in the class, you actually talk about how you go like one step further and do a little bit of modifications to this on top of just the, the mechanical modulation. Yeah, so what I'll do is I will run what, uh, what's called viscosity buster in my ink. So I run that in there about like 1% and it really changes the property of this ink entirely. It is, it's incredible. When, when I first used this ink, the first day, I think I posted on Instagram how much I hated this stuff. Cause I was just like, man, this is one of the worst printing inks ever. And then we had actually gotten to a bind one day in the shop and uh, we needed a low cure solution and that was sitting on the shelf. And I was like, I gotta figure out a way to make this work. I added a little bit of viscosity buster in there, mixed it up real good. And then all of a sudden I was like, wow, this stuff is incredible and uh, completely changed my whole shop over to it, so. So it's tips like that that you're gonna learn in the live course as well. Uh, so yeah. Because that is a game changer when it comes, especially printing on hoodies with this ink. Yes, absolutely. Hoodies are probably one of the more difficult things to use and uh, it prints wonderful with it. I guess we're gonna need a squeegee too. Yeah, I yeah. asked Can of Corn to get a squeegee and I think he started flipping it instead of putting it in the press. <laughs> no, I said just, no, at the beginning of the, at the, beginning of the shoot. Okay, we got, oh, that's a triple, okay. Yeah, we got a triple. We've been using mostly triples. We do cover different squeegee durometers in the course, but we've been, oh man, just out of the bucket, you can see yeah. the difference. Let's, Why don't you uh, get your Let me get camera. the handheld camera and- uh, Maybe I guess I'll do the print because you're much better. Send it over to the movie. handheld and like, look at the difference between these two inks. So this right now is the modulated version and that's right out of the bucket. I mean, it's night and day, absolutely night and day. Hey, one of the tips Lee picked up this week from, from yeah. me. <laughs> I had no idea about baby wipes. That's, uh, that's a new one for me. These things are incredible. I'm gonna they go- They not only clean up baby crap. Yeah, I'm about to go buy some Kirkland stock, I think. <laughs> All right, so uh, should, we, should we, should I like hold your camera or should I do it so you can hold your camera? We'll, we'll just, we'll switch that camera afterwards. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, I've never done this before, man. This is, uh, this is different. I've never even, you want to know something funny? What? I've actually never done a split fountain print, period. Oh, really? Yeah, that's, that's usually like day one stuff for a lot of people. I have never, ever done this. That'd be a great video to do. Yeah, that would be actually. So I just leave that little I'm gonna line I'm going to leave this before, little yeah, line so in the middle so we can see the separation. Exactly what we've got going on. We're going to use a pull stroke. So this is a 158 standard mesh. We're going to talk meshes in a second here. But, oh, dude, crazy. It is crazy. That one side barely cleared. Oh wow, that, yeah, huge, huge difference. So switching over to the handheld camera, we got- Handheld camera? Yep, this is our modulated ink on the left. This is our unmodulated ink on the right. So obviously we'd be able to get this to clear the mesh by working it a little bit, using a little bit more pressure, but this was even, even pressure, even speed across the board, and obviously having the modulated ink, it's, it's a night and day difference. Yeah. It makes a big difference, especially with those white inks. That was cool. I, uh, good idea for thinking about that yeah. test. <laughs> that's, that's a new one. All right, so I think the next thing that we're gonna cover is mesh selection. So the course we start just by screen making because everything starts with the screen making a good screen. Yes. And a lot of times what we said in the shop is like people will just get your screen printing package, you go to the store, get a screen, what do you typically start with? Yeah, so most people will just start with the standard mesh counts that everybody does. They'll start with, you know, a 20 by 24 static frame. Um, typically, you know, 110, 156, 230, that's the selection most people seem to start off with, I would say. Yeah, so we used our standard 110 and our standard 158. These are just standard high-text screens. 
and nothing special about them. But then we also, most of the prints that we did in the class, most of the testing we were done was, which was thin thread, right? Yeah, the difference between thin thread and standard thread is it's, it's huge. And if you look at this um, overlay we just created for you, well, this is a close up macro shot of the two mesh counts side by side and you can see very visibly on the thin thread just how much more opening there is between those threads which is going to allow more ink to pass through you're going to get more opacity um, overall you're just going to get a much better end result so i believe if i remember my numbers right so the micron thread so most of us should measure mesh count like 110 158 which is how many threads cross per inch but the thin thread has a different thinner micron so this is a 64 standard high techs so these are both soddy meshes 64 thread diameter on uh, microns and then on the thin thread it is a 48. So just right there you get like a 20% or so difference in the thread diameter and then as far as open area this actually gives you 40, 46% open area and this one gives you only 32% open area. So with the same mesh for detail retention you can get a much much better lay down but why don't we actually see what we got out of this class and kind of show. And, yeah and one other good thing about thin thread is it requires a lot less pressure to, to work with, so you're gonna get less fatigue over time. That's one reason that I switched to it when I was still printing on a manual press. Um, and we kind of tested that a little bit during the course, just like seeing how much pressure will affect that stuff because it, it does make a big difference. Yeah, squash, uh, pressure, squeegee durometer as well. And just in the two different prints, like me and you printed a print together and yeah. I was pushing down a little bit too much and you loosened your pressure up and it made the world a difference. Yeah, we actually have a little test to show you guys later on in the stream. Um, so we got here. This is our 110, right? Yep. Okay. Standard 110. Cool. So we're gonna rock one. Yeah. Does ink go bad? Does ink go bad? does not go bad, as far as I know. You would know. If more you than modulate me. it up, it stays it, pretty it'll good. It'll stay I mean, for a very long time. Like as long as you stir it up and get everything worked back in, get the plasticizers mixed in, it's it's pretty much indestructible. It seems. Yeah. Like the, what one good thing is you keep your ink clean by capping it at all yes. times. Yeah. And even like, I always forget to do that. It's a huge pet peeve of Tom in the main lab. Uh, you like <laughs> leaving ink containers everywhere. It, you have a, you've even cut it out for your revolve ink so that it doesn't get stuff inside. Yeah, it. that was one of the first things I did was I just notched the, uh, the lid on my revolving or on my, uh, my ink bucket. So when it's on the revolve ink and it's not being used, I just can put it on there without having to take the ink bucket off because yeah, I never want to leave my white open because there's lint flying around in here 24 seven. It's just going to mess your ink up and it's going to look bad. So anyway, let's get into our 110 mesh. And in the course, we also really dial in off contact and things of that nature, which is obviously all set here. Uh, and some lessons I had to relearn, to be fair, take it, you know, filming the course. And obviously I can see the screen, it's clear and great. So 110 is not a bad mesh to learn. It's, it's, not, it's not terrible, honestly. It's, uh, it's one, gonna be one of the easier ones probably to start off with because you know you can get the ink to pass through it very easily. Plus on the standard thread, like you can kind of beat the crap out of these things and they're gonna be able to take it where you have to be a little bit more delicate with the thin thread stuff. So great starter setup. However, it is gonna lay down a lot more ink. You're gonna have a much thicker, kind of heavier feeling print. And more ink's not necessarily better when it comes to your underbase, right? No, absolutely not. And we will check that out here right away once we uh, print these three shirts. We have a nice little side-by-side -side comparison for you that I put together last night. By the way, I got to print on this all week. It's the Riley 250 Lee Stewart edition, and it is primo. Oh, man, that's a standard durometer, too. So Yeah, we're changing change it up. up. We're changing it up. All right, so this is our standard 158 Hitex. Again, that's a 64 micron thread. Good clear on that second pass. Nice pressure. They're oh, what? the thin threads? Oh, I don't know. I don't know who would pop I was, thin thread frames. Yeah, I was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was pretty scared of that too at first. Um, but now that I've gotten used to it, it's just really changing your workflow a little bit. Um, just being a little bit more careful. It's mainly like the more you're going to pop them more in the rec reclaim process than you are on press for sure. Um, so just or being maybe a when more... you stretch them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because we also cover panel versus static frames yeah. in the course and really the differences between the two. And so we had to stretch up about 20 panel frames. We're going to have a behind the scenes video come <laughs> up on my channel before this uh, course hits everybody. And uh, 
Somebody we may got have some popped good some screens. footage of screens popping in here. That's Somebody sure. may have popped. <laughs> so this is our thin thread. This is a 157 Saudi Hydro. And you're actually, that first pass cleared the mesh. Yeah, it, it First cleared. pass cleared the mesh. So that's that's what I was talking about with pressure. That's crazy. So like my brain still thinks I'm printing on these standard meshes. So I probably can lighten up a lot from where I'm at right now. So I'm gonna go back it down to like probably half of where I was. And yeah, yeah now it's clearing perfectly. We got a super, super bright white here. So. Yeah. We do have this nice little overlay for you. You can see all three of them side by side. Um, we got the 110, the 158 standard, and the 157 on the, I think it's the far right. And there's there's a clear cut winner here, for yeah. sure. Yeah, I would also say that these are just standard 20 singles, carded open and cotton. So this is like your cheap shirt that you would buy, kind of your budget shirt. Yeah, this is definitely gonna be one of your more difficult shirts to get a nice clean print on. So this was probably the best example we could show you guys on uh, the difference between these three screens. Well, so, yeah, I, I know a guy right, <laughs> right here. <laughs> we make screens, yeah. But I mean, there's the thing about getting screens is do what works for you. We were at a shop earlier today, uh, uh, Floodway, I think you're watching, and he uses the panel frames as well because it's hard for you to get screens up here. It is, so it really depends on where you are geographically. Some people have um, screen stretching services readily available within their city. So for you, you might wanna use a static frame, but for people like me that we have to ship these things around, it's not cost effective for us to get them restretched. So it makes way more sense to invest into something like a panel frame. Yeah, for up here in Canada, and actually this is, you can get any type of mesh. If you accidentally rip the mesh, you don't have to wait to get a whole nother screen. You got backup mesh panels. So these are the eco frame, eco panel frames and it's been awesome. I'm, I normally print with statics, and so we use thin thread a lot, uh, but also standard meshes, and this has been great this week. It has. So let's get Ryan on the press All now. Right. Let's get him printing. Let's go. <laughs> I do this every day. He, uh, he needs more practice. Is the next <laughs> slide, did we do the open end versus the... We're going to do push versus pull next. Oh, per, 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If we, yeah, Richard, yeah. can you punch in on this? Or do you want to grab your you camera? Can. Maybe, yeah. You know what? We're going to switch over to my handheld camera here right now. Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I'm running out of HDMI cable here. So, hell yeah. Thank you, sir. So if we punch into my camera right now, you can kind of see we're at kind of, uh, I like to run it on a manual press a little bit higher. So I would say just a little bit more than like a nickel's thickness. Um, anywhere between like a 16th to an eighth of an inch, you're going to be golden. So it's going to, it's going to depend on a couple of factors, of course, like your press and how much deflection it has, um, your screen tension, things like that. And of course, you know, how heavy your hands are when you print. So it's going to be somewhere within that range, you're going to be golden. Now, yeah. Have you seen that that translates over into auto now that you're rocking the bolt? Actually, so yeah, when it comes to auto, you can run a hell of a lot closer because on an auto, the screen is supported on both sides and the mesh is doing the stretching, doing the work. So you can run much, much closer, hold tighter registration. Um, and it's just way more consistent. So the age old question, do you push or do you pull? I pull. So I started off as a pusher. Um, I, everybody that is familiar with my channel knows this. I used to be a pro rider. I've broken my wrists, my hands way more times than anybody should. So I could never pull with a standard squeegee. Um, so I pushed for a very long time and I thought I had that perfected. I thought I was like the best push stroker ever. And then once I got my hands on one of these and was able to pull stroke effectively, I was just blown away at how much different the result was. It was just night and day better for me. Yeah, it's been really nice using these all week. When we live print with Allmade, we typically like to bring the Lee Stewart squeegees because if you drop them, <laughs> and they're so much more ergonomically friendly. I like to push and pull. I actually pull probably more than I push, uh, just because when you're, you have different abilities, and we'll talk about it after I do it, but different abilities to control the ink. But from an ergonomical or, or strength perspective, it is a little bit easier. Yeah, push, it definitely probably. takes less out of you to do a push stroke. That's without question. But when it comes down to the, the final quality result, you, you can't beat the pull stroke. All right, so here we go. Let's see. And this is our thin thread frame again. So we're just going to flood back and then print, going a little bit of an angle to not catch that hard base camp edge logo. OK, it's not bad. Not bad at all. Not bad. I, I, call, gonna... that, I call that a. A B minus. B minus, okay. <laughs> I never thought I'd see the day where I'm critiquing this guy right here. Oh, white ink. What's the range of tension that we're running with some So when it comes to tension, your ideal tension, you want to be around 25 newtons or higher. That is like, you know, the perfect zone. But uh, anywhere in the range of 20 to 25 is still very, very good. 
All right, so now pull, and again, like you have the ability to control your angle and control that ink flow. So with this, we're typically using a medium angle, and then I'm gonna try not go, to go too hard on the pressure there. Good, clear the first pass. And then second pass, nice release. And let's get your camera out. Actually, no, we have a- Yeah, we got something we can pop up on screen yeah. right now. So we did this earlier on. We did a push stroke versus a pull and there's a very clear winner here when it comes to opacity. The yeah. pull stroke is the winner by a long shot. You can control that so much more and the way the ink is flowing underneath the blade is just much, much better to allow that to sit on top of the fibers versus smash in them. When it comes to laying a flat under base, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, because what's going on here, so when you're doing a push stroke, right, you're really just, you have one, um, you have one angle of attack with the ink, and that's it. You're, you're limited the edge to of that. The blade. You just that's have the edge got. of the blade to push it in, and that's all you have. But when you're pulling, you can angle your squeegee up and down and control that ink flow a lot more. So if you need to lay down more ink, you can lay down further. You need to lay down less, you can angle upwards. And uh, it just gives you, far, far more control and you can uh, obviously get a better result. Yeah. Well, speaking of results, we printed a lot of, on this particular job, the goal of the class is to show a variety of jobs, right? So we're gonna be running some independent fleece. Yep. Uh, we're gonna be running uh, simulated processed half tones, and then the basics print right here. And of course, we're actually gonna go way more in depth with this, but this is one of the designs just to show a simple print and then an overlay with color. A lot of people print flash print, yeah, that's something that we didn't teach in there. No. Print flash print before the uh, the top cover, just one under base. Because if you're print flash printing, you're wasting time. Yep. You know, and you're not ink. you're not getting the coverage. You're not getting the uh, the color accuracy. There's a lot of reasons that you shouldn't. Um, and of course, we we print on all different types of shirts in this thing. So we covered obviously open end carded cotton, and we cover ring spun. And we did a comparison test with both of these as well. Um, and if you look at both of these on the screen right now, you can see that uh, the open end carded cotton is a little bit of a rougher print, a little bit more fibrillation going on where of course the ring spun this is an all made shirt that we printed on much cleaner much smoother result and this was of course on a manual press yeah the all made AL2100 we did a lot of testing up here printed actually the one that you just gave me because you use a little bit different shirts up here so yeah we have a little bit of a different selection up here we don't have everything available in Canada so uh, we got some of our own kind of house brands it's I guess ATC you would say. right ATC from Sanmar is one of the house brands up here yeah. in Sanmar I use a lot of those and um, these are PC54 so yeah. I think the ATC was very similar to this one that you got like the 5.4 ounce yeah but then you gave me the 2000 yeah earlier today that one yeah I printed yeah. that compared to like a district and then an all made and then a PC 54. And that one prints really good. It's that's a ring the, spun. That's one of the best printing shirts I've ever touched. Yeah. But I will say that, you know, maybe a little bit biased, but this, this is by far been the winner <laughs> so far. All right. Yeah. So and that was actually the first time I've printed on an all made shirt. To be and honest, what do you think? And I, I, mean, I actually liked it. It turned out really, really well. And the, the fibers just lay down really, really flat, which really helps that ink to pop. But obviously it's a more expensive shirt too. So it is. It's all organic, but it's more, more expensive. So a lot of people are gonna be printing on these and, uh, or a more of a budgetary ring spun shirt. So you gotta know how to use the tools, how to use what we talked about so far, and then what we're gonna get to on the autumn press to enhance those results no matter what your substrate is. Yeah. Cool, well that pretty much, I think that covers us on the manual, I believe. Yeah, are so, you, any questions before we head over? Yeah, let's head over to the desk. Let's answer a couple questions. Yeah. I'm gonna move this camera out of the way so I don't stomp on it. Are you keeping track on your phone? Yeah. Baby. All yeah, up there. We go. Get on in there. Yeah. All right. Big dog. <laughs> okay. Q and A time. So yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of manual Q and A. So let's start dropping some stuff. Yeah. So the first question is, you know, people want to know if they see Ryan Moore out in the wild, should they come up and say hi? Because somebody was on your flight on your way here. No way. Yeah, man. They didn't really? Know, they didn't know what to do, man. <laughs> was his name Richard Bineski? No, it was not Richard <laughs> Bineski. It was That's awesome. Yeah. Come say hi. There, I've done the math. There's like one out of every 1,000 people are screen printers. Really? Roughly, yeah. So, you know, it's, pretty good it's fun to see and talk screen printing like in the most random places. Yeah, Especially in the wild, yeah. man. Yeah. We're a rare breed. <laughs> so the other thing, um, you know, uh, kitchen made, doesn't, it doesn't add up to the same thing as this mixer? If we were no, get one. <laughs> not even close. I mean, it'll get the job done, of course, but I, it's, it's going to get burnt out motors, things like that. It's, it's not an industrial setup, but I mean, if it's something to, to get you going and get you started with ink modulation, I mean, there's never a bad idea. Yeah. Put the bucket in there sideways. Yeah. You, you want to <laughs> stick it back in the right way. Ryan was rushing. Yeah. <laughs> so people were, were loving those prints. They look 
so nice, especially on camera, all that stuff. I like, really like the macros. Huh? Yeah. The and macros are great. The ma yeah. macros are crazy. People like that. The question, though, like people are having is, you know, coming from both worlds, like the manual and the auto world, you know, um, when it comes to the R&D, is it as simple as it looks? No, it's not. I originally, so like, I have to like go back and like redact something I said in a podcast a long time ago. I think it was on Shirt Show. I was talking about, you know, being able to uh, throw a monkey on an auto and they'd be able to run it. Like, duh, duh. that was the <laughs> worst thing I could have said. It was so wrong. Um, it, took, it took me a while. So like a lot of the stuff from a manual press does transition over, but it is an entirely different workflow. There's a lot of different setup stuff. And of course, you've got a big machine. You got to start figuring out how to work in a control panel and all this stuff. And there's a lot that can go wrong. And probably like the biggest thing when it comes to going to an auto, I mean, when you're printing on a manual, you're physically touching every shirt as it goes. So you're really, you're gonna mess up one shirt at a time, maybe, maybe two. Whereas the auto, like you can mess up a lot in a very short amount of time. And I learned my lesson on that a couple of times. I actually did it like two weeks ago. I destroyed 800 bucks worth of hoodies just in oh, like 10 minutes. Oh, I saw minutes. that. And uh, it can happen quick, guys. It's, <laughs> that's probably the biggest thing when it comes to uh, transitioning to an auto. It can print a lot of shirts, but it can also mess a lot of shirts up. Yeah. So. So the R&D obviously takes time. We always tell people screen printing is a problem solver's world. It's not a plug and play world. It okay? is. As much as you know, you see the tutorials, you see the videos, all that stuff. So some of the things that really matter when it comes down to this, you know, especially we're talking base, right? You know, so let's talk and get into it. You know, people want to know like, how important is that stick? And what does that stick look like for you? Do you like it super sticky? Like, what are you, what are you, um, what are you going for with that stick? You know, yeah. it's, it's all about the stickiness. It's a good question. I'm like, I like it borderline where the stickiness is almost gone, yeah. to be honest. Not I'm like, too much stick. Just, just a little mm -hmm. bit of it left. Yeah. Okay, okay. Now, and then there's some tools that you use on the automatic press that help with that too. That there is, get of course, there. we're gonna get into those. Definitely, definitely. So the next question I, I guess I would ask is like, you know, Obviously, we have so many options with all our amazing suppliers in our industry and stuff like that, right? Like, what type of rubber are you trying to use? You know, it's all, it comes down to the rubber most of the time. The squeegee rubber? Yeah. When yeah, so base. I, uh, my opinion on it is it's very subjective, of course. I feel like you can use almost anything and compensate. Of course, you can, <laughs> I can, I like to go with stiffer rubber and compensate with pressure and speed. Um, but I mean, that's just me. It's, I think it's more of a subjective thing. So I like using triple durometer um, for white pretty much exclusively. And then I'm kind of like a 70 duro for everything else. Oh, yeah. And you hit it, dude, like that. I was gonna, you ran right into my next question. Speed, how important is that? When Speed's it comes to huge, yeah. very huge. Um, whether you're running an auto or on a manual, um, speed is kind of, you know, again, that's one of those pros and cons kind of things. So the faster you go, the less quality that base is going to be. The slower you go, the more quality it's going to be. But of course, your production speed goes down. So you got to kind of weigh the two out and, you know, do what's best for you. My personal philosophy on it is I like going slow because I would personally rather print 100 shirts perfect than 1,000 shirts half-assed. Oh, yeah. That's one of the things we're going to test around in the course, too, and we already did some of that this week, is like, if you do need to go faster, what are ways to get there? If you can afford to go slower, you know, how do you compensate? How does your actual pressure settings, all that change when the, the speed of your press changes. Oh yeah, and I'd say the number one thing that plays into all of that is cleanliness. And we yeah. did a pretty good job with that this week. Clean shop, <laughs> clean work, yeah, man. Yeah, no platins printed. <laughs> yeah. One, one yeah. almost yeah. burned yeah. down, We're but. Ready. All right, <laughs> All right. so I think, any other questions before we head over to the auto press? Well, for the most part, I think that's good. I think that gets us in a nice transition. You know, a lot of people have some questions on just like specifically with the auto, how can we R&D, what are things to look at with the R&D? So I think we just get right into that. Cool, All right. let's transition over here then. I got my handheld camera, because I know I'm going to need it. Okay, so on this one, we're going to show a variety of different prints. And we're going to be doing, again, just your standard basic card open end shirts. But we're going to be doing it with different mesh sizes as well as different processes around it. So we have our standard 158 mesh, like we used on the manual press. But then we also have the 157. And then we're just flashing that at 110 degrees for three seconds. This is the bolt white, right, Lee? Yes, this is the bolt white on here right now. All right, and then we are going to be doing that. We're gonna be then comparing that to a roller, and then we're comparing that to a stamped underbase. So three different comparisons. In the course, we actually get into even more comparisons on top of that. It is good, specifically when you start to use the tools to let the press heat up. So we're gonna not run the flash in sequential mode. We're gonna let the platens heat up as we print these first two shirts. and start with just our 158 mesh. So I'm gonna turn that one on. <laughs> we've, been, we've been saying for the last three days, this touch screen really only seems to agree with me. <laughs> All right. 
And then I'm gonna try not to print a plaid. So last oh, piece. I hope so. So how's that clearing over there? Can we grab the your camera? So yeah, um, let's see. I wanna stop the press real fast. So this one, if we switch over to this camera, we're getting a decent clear, but it's, it's not great. This definitely could be a little bit warmer, could use a little bit more pressure. Um, but overall, it's not terrible. Definitely doesn't clear the, the first pass, but the second pass clears The second good. pass yeah. gets a little better. So this yeah. one was a lot better than the first one. I think this ink just been, has been sitting here for the last 10 minutes, cooling down. Okay, so what we're gonna do with this second print is we're gonna roll the second one to kind of compare the result. So, Zach, let me know when that shirt gets over, knee, over to the flash, and then I'll turn the roller on. Lee, what kind of pressure settings do you use on your roller, your action roller? Um, when I use the roller, I'm running at around like 60 PSI, 65. I run it pretty heavy. We're at the flash. Okay, that's the first one, so I'm gonna turn the roller on for the next one. It does the next rotation, and then it will do two rolls, all right. Oh, I did it on that one? Okay, so now I'll turn it on the second one. You told me, you're like, you're gonna mess this up. Like, I knew, I as long like, as I don't print a, print a platen, <laughs> then we're good. He explained this stuff, it was like trying to decipher the Da Vinci Code, how he's gonna <laughs> print these shirts, but. All right, so here they come. Now the overprint, what are we using for our overprints? We get into that a little bit more in the live course, but what are we using, what kind of mesh are we using? Um, so for the overprints, we're using a 230 thin thread mesh. Um, we're using Wilflex Epic Rio to mix the color, and a lot of people have asked what color it is because that green looks awesome. That is Pantone 375C. Yeah, perfect color, and it does look awesome. Yeah, love it's that. It's really, color. really popped when you did this design for yeah. the, the course. Okay, so we're going to do our two overprints. You want to grab your B, B cam? Yes. And we'll see this over. So the first one again is roll, the second one is not, and we'll see the two results that we get. This is two passes no, we, on the we top. We got to run the stamp one too. We will, we'll do that next. Yeah, because our comparison photo shows all three of them. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then. So while this is going around, Lee, I got a question for you. Yeah. Obviously, we're doing a top color on this, but like, say if I was just running like a white print, um, or maybe like a print with, you know, white in it and stuff like that, are you normally running just a base and painting it twice? What are you doing? Yeah, just a base, running two squeegee strokes, stamping it, top color, comes out golden. Are you doing highlight white or are you hitting the base twice to get that white? Always a highlight white, always highlight white. Yeah, you can totally, even though that mesh didn't clear as much the first time, just rolling it is a big difference over yeah. here. Yeah, so let's start off switching to my handheld camera here. Um, this is our first one. This is the one that did not get rolled. This was just a straight up print with the top color. Not bad, but you can definitely see some, some fibers poking through. Um, we'll move over here now to the one that's been rolled. And obviously this is a much, much needed improvement. So the roller definitely helps, but we are going to be using some other modifiers, of course. Yeah, we're going to be doing the first, we're going to be switching messages. So we'll do two passes using the uh, thin thread, because that was our standard mesh. So now we're going to be switching over to thin thread, and we're going to be doing the same thing and kind of comparing the results. And then we can take a look at the macros that we shot during the course. Yeah, we got some good macros ones. showing a comparison between all three, the stamp. You want to load um, that shirt right there? Sure. Any questions while we're loading, Zach? Yeah, I mean, so some of the questions that people have are, you know, when it comes to hitting that underbase, are we double stroking, single stroking? What do you like to go with? Personally, I'm a double stroker. Same, that's, that's my thing. Um, I've heard of, you know, using the single, getting those pressures up and speeds dialed in to do it. But again, I'm going for quality, I'm going for opacity, and I think doing a double is just going to win every time, personally. Yeah. Guarantees that clear screen. Yeah. Couldn't agree with you more, man. So with that, you know, when you're coming to your base, especially on the auto, everything's a preset, right? So what do you like to run with like angles, pressure, stuff like that? Um, angles and pressure, again, that's kind of subjective, it seems like. Um, for me, for my base white, I kind of run around, like once my ink is warmed up, I'm kind of around, you know, I would say 40 PSI is kind of the range I like to go. And then for speed, I got that thing turned pretty much as low as it can go. Yeah. Yeah. And then we're doing double hits on this one. Now this is the, again, the thin thread. So the only difference here in this print is we're printing a different mesh. Yeah, so this is our 157 thin thread, one with roller, one without. Okay, is that first one flashing? Okay, so this, this time the second one's gonna be rolled. Yeah, so that one will be rolled. Okay, which is what I meant to do the last time. I just got a little trigger happy. 
We still, again, got a, we still got a few more to go. I'm waiting <laughs> for that pallet print. No way, man. <laughs> It does. So the Huge. question is, I, just make sure people can hear the question, is the inks printing nicer, like is the Vizosity Buster a big deal when it comes to printing it's, on press? It's a huge deal, especially when using this ink. It's gonna depend on the ink you're using, of course, um, but when it comes to the Bolt White, I think that Viscosity Buster is like, it's paramount. I think it's absolutely crucial to add it in there. Okay, so this is Thin Thread. So kind of live commentary and B-roll cam as these come across, just to see how different they print. You can see those two prints together, how, how much, different they look compared to our standard mesh. And then again, the second one is rolled. Okay, so switching back to handheld cam. Damn, we got the first good. one here. This one is just through thin thread, no roller, no nothing. Definitely got more opacity out of this one. Definitely got a smoother print. Um, again, this is an open end carded cotton shirt, so this can be the harder one to print. And then we have our rolled version, whereas this one is extremely smooth. This one almost has uh, almost no fibrillation at all. This thing is about as good as it gets, to be honest with you, um, except for that little lint spot there. Let's not pay attention to that little guy. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, huge difference between the thin thread and the standard. And of course, the uh, if I can reach over here, maybe. Let me see here. Richard, watch the Let cord. me see. Oh yeah, we're good. So you can definitely see this one cleared way, way nicer than the standard thread screen. All right, clear. I'm gonna run this around twice and then we're gonna be using one of the newer tools in your shop, which is which one? The Stampinator. That thing is one of my favorite tools in the shop. Honestly, I, I don't think I can run without it. Yeah. Why do you like it and how do you use it? I use it as, um, I use it as my first flash. So I have my, my underbase and then that thing is stamping it, flashing it and smoothing everything out. And it's just like the results that come out of that thing, they're, they're honestly unmatchable. So you can actually use it and it, and it doesn't stick to it, even though it's touching it. Yeah, no, there's a Teflon sheet on there, of course. Um, load that one. As long as you have the heat set right and your time set right, it's, it's never gonna stick to it, so. Now, one thing about using low, Bolt White's a low cure ink. So when we're using the Stampinator, we really dial this in the course, but just for anyone using low cure inks, when you're flashing a low cure ink, your curing parameters are drastically, the, the variety of, not the variety, but your latitude between top flash and low flash is a lot thinner because you're lower cure. So if you over flash it, it cures the ink and then you can have adhesion problems. So it's very, very important to have warm platens. Yes, of so, course. All right, so you want to manually hit this. Oh, I'm leaving this up to you. I'm waiting oh. for you to print a pallet. No, 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 I, <laughs> I made a bet a before this. Okay, all right, <laughs> I'll, I'll start walking around the press if you want me to manually print because I, I have not mastered the control screen over here. So. All right, so we're going to do one 158 and one thin thread one? Uh, no, we're just, yes, correct, yep. Okay, cool. So, so we're gonna start the thin thread. Let's stick this bad boy under our 158. Look at this, this touch screen just loves me, I swear. I'm the only one You have one the that, magic touch. I'm the only one that can make it work because I press it like 3,000 times a day. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You know, in that. Uh, okay, that's clearing good the second time. That's clearing nice. All right, let's okay. send it over cool. to the stamp. Let's send it over to stamp. And how long do you stamp typically for? I kind of like to live in that five, six second range. I okay. can turn it down as the pallets get hotter, but uh, typically I kind of like to stay there. Okay, so the platens maybe hit this just a little bit more because the platen is a little bit cooler. Okay. So what we're looking for- We have let them cool off while sitting around. Is it, uh, what we're looking to do is that ink to release all the way. Yeah. And not stick on the pad. I think we're good there. Cool. Okay. All right, so then I got to send this back over to our thin thread, our next shirt. And then let me we're gonna get print that. that bad boy. Now this one, I don't know who glued this pallet, but it ain't, it's not ideal. So let's see if it sticks or oh. not. Some, <laughs> yeah, what's it mean? this one may lift on us. Well, no, it's sticking down. All right, okay. back to the stamp. Back to the stamp. And then hit that just a little bit longer. question uh, we we're talking about inks low cure stuff like that are you using the same white Good. on your highlight white as you are in your base yes um, I was using different inks a few times but uh, I just I'm trying to thin out the amount of stuff in my shop so I just kind of transitioned over to one for everything hey Lee you want to bring your close-up camera over here if you take yes. a look at those bases Let's do that and then I also want to show underneath the stampinator to, to see like how that ink is not so transferring let's check out the uh, let's check out the 158 standard thread first Okay, so this is our 158 standard thread now that it's been stamped. Beautiful, beautiful finish. This thing is 
as smooth as it gets. Like printing top color over this is incredible. You're never gonna beat this quality of finish. However, when we go over to our thin thread, we definitely got a little bit better coverage going on. It's definitely a little bit brighter, a little bit more opaque. Um, we're definitely gonna get a little bit better top color coverage out of this. And then when we go down here to see the bottom of our stamp, we got no transfer going on. There's like a slight ghosting there, but that is it. Um, and it really just comes down to spending some time with this thing to dial in your times, your temperatures, and, uh, and getting it right. Very, very important as that platen heats up uh, to keep an eye on that. The Teflon is a telltale sign of what's happening with the Stampinator. So just like a flash dryer, the Stampinator actually works very, very similar to the flash dryer, but it's so much more finicky to dial it in because it's touching the freaking it shirt. It is, yeah. It's not something you can just plug in and get working right away. You've got to spend a little bit of time with it, but it's not something that's going to be a huge headache either, I don't think. It's yeah. like you spend about an afternoon with it, maybe a full day, and just test things out, and uh, you're going to have some great results by the time you're done. And it's not rocket science either. So if you are, it's pretty simple. If you are under flashed, you simply raise the temperature on the Stampinator. Yes. If you're over flashed or if you're curing the ink, then you simply lower the temperature on the Stampinator. Yeah, and it's same thing goes hard. for time as well. You can, you can kind of change it up between the two, maybe more time, maybe more temperature. Um, it just comes down to playing around and messing around with it. So with me personally, I run the green rubber in mine, so that eats up some of the temperature a little bit, and uh, you have to run it a little bit hotter. So I run mine around like 350, 360 degrees, and I typically stamp for around like five seconds or so once the pallets are warmed up, and that seems to be the sweet spot for the ink that I'm using. All right, the second doing? one's printing right now. Yep, so we're gonna print our top color over top of it. And then uh, we'll show you guys a comparison between a bunch of these things. We got a comparison between the 158 versus 157, and then a comparison between the roller, the stamp, and nothing at all. Yo, Lee, I gotta ask, man, this base looks crazy. Like, when you're busting your white with that velocity, what type of velocity buster are you using, man? Like, I gotta know, what are you getting it from? The viscosity buster? Yeah, um, well, I don't know, is Ryan not carrying it yet? We should have it. It's, well, we just started Will Flex again, so yeah. it's a product that we use in Made Lab quite often. You do have to be, and we cover this in the course, but you do, don't want to just start throwing it and stuff. You have to be careful with it. You know? Yeah, you do have to do some testing and messing around. And of course, there are two versions of it. There's a low cure and a standard cure, so make sure you're using the right one for your ink. Because I did that the wrong way for a little while and messed some stuff up. <laughs> These prints are fire, man. Like, yeah. You want to grab your camera. These things and then... look super, super good. So let me uh, switch over to handheld mode right here. Okay, so here is our stamped shirt. This is our 158 standard thread, I believe. Um, incredible result. Like this thing is ridiculously smooth. It looks amazing. And then we switch over here to our thin thread and very comparable, very comparable. This thing has definitely just got a little bit more opacity it seems, but I mean, we're talking about maybe a 3% improvement. All right, and I believe so, we have some macros that we can pop up on screen. Yes, we have show. a couple of macros. So our first one is going to be our standard thread versus thin thread version. So we have um, a 158 standard thread versus 157 thin thread um, with a top color on top of it. Huge, huge difference, of course. You can see between having, I think it was uh, stamp versus no stamp, correct? Yes. No, no, is it stamp versus, yeah, should stamp, be the... Stamp versus no stamp, um, of course, without the stamp, does not look very good <laughs> with the stamp absolutely huge and yeah. then of course when you see with the stamp the difference that you get between the thin thread and the standard thread is is very small compared to the manual yeah, yeah the thing about that is that a lot of you know thin threads are a little bit more delicate so if yeah. you have tools that you can modify the processes instead of actually modifying the supplies used in the process you can make things a little bit easier. So a lot of people, you don't have to run thin threads on that underbase, and we didn't see a huge difference there. No, we saw well. a huge difference, of course, on the manual. That's where you're gonna see most of it, but on the auto, when you're using a tool like a Stampinator, you kinda, you're just getting little, little improvements. So I would say um, you don't really have to rush to change your shop over to thin thread. If you're already kinda set up with one of these, you can kinda get a Stampinator and uh, get pretty close to the same result. Yeah, what about the roller versus Stampinator? Did you see, did we have that one on screen? Yes, so the next one we're gonna bring up is with nothing at all, and then a roller, and then a Stampinator, all side by side. And of course, when you see these three compared, um, it's a clear-cut winner. Yeah. 
But the roller does make a huge difference. The roller does make a massive difference. And, um, and I think we could probably dial that in even to make it even better. We could definitely do it because I don't use the roller very often in my shop. It's uh, just a once in a while kind of thing. So I bet you if I spent like a day or two with it like I have with the Stampinator, I could definitely get a lot more out of it. But um, the big difference there is the cost of the barrier of entry. Of course, a roller is a lot cheaper to get into. So I mean- like, And you can use the roller on a manual press. You can use the roller on a manual press. We are gonna cover that in the course as well. I have the manual roller squeegee over there, which we used and we did some testing with and it honestly shocked me that how much of a difference it makes. Yeah, it's crazy. And these action rollers, again, like you said, not huge you know, investments, but do make a difference. Yes. The advantage, another advantage of the Stampinator though, is that you pick up a print head, so. Absolutely, that's that's probably the biggest advantage to running a Stampinator on auto, you get that extra print head back. And for me, that is the most important thing because I have a 10 color press, which is pretty big, but we print eight color prints here on pretty much a daily basis. And I can't afford to give that head up. So running the Stampinator allows me to get a little bit more out of my press. Nice. All right, are we ready for some questions? Oh yeah, man, we gotta start off with this first one, man, especially because we were just that slant, right? And you, yeah. and I, you and I actually asked about what the heck was going on, right? <laughs> so Jeff wants to know, right? What, what do you think is the proper amount of flood that you need on a print? Because he, he does not flood, <laughs> he doesn't at, flood all. at all. Yeah, he doesn't he? flood at all, man. man. Yeah, <laughs> I was talking to him earlier today because, oh, we gotta tell a Stampinator story. Oh, oh right. Oh, yeah. man. So, Zach almost burnt my shop down <laughs> last night. Yeah, <laughs> he, was, he was the guy that was supposed to turn everything off. And uh, so I turned my air compressor off at night so it doesn't cycle. And uh, with the Stampinator in that head, uh, once you lose air pressure, the head goes down. Well, we left the Stampinator on overnight with a shirt on that pallet. Luckily it, there was a shirt on it. There was a shirt on it. That thankfully. was probably a good thing. Well, that was where I was thinking that we might have a fire because of the shirt. But <laughs> I, was, I was actually testing that. I wanted <laughs> yeah. to see how long it could last. That, that Samar PC54 shirt. Yeah. It stayed quality. on there for 12 hours at 360 <laughs> degrees and just got, that is the most cured shirt in existence right now. <laughs> and, oh uh, man. Yeah. It, we, you walked in, you're like, I smelled smell? something the second I walked in yeah. this morning. And the platen was like, for right, I, we tried to pick it up. We had to hold it with like oven yeah. mitts. Even the pallet arm itself was hot. Like it, it, it was bad. <laughs> so tech tip is if you have an Eco or a Next, either plug your Stampinator into your machine, which you can do. They are single phase units, but if you just wire them differently, they can plug into three phase presses, uh, which will turn it off when you turn the press on, keep your air on, or just turn turn your Stampinator off. Yeah, that's something right, I'm gonna... Yeah, yeah, you guys definitely double <laughs> yeah. check, you know? That's definitely a shop improvement I'm gonna make after these guys leave. I have my Stampinator wired in on its own and I'm gonna put it in on the press because I shut my press off every single day, so. I don't want that to happen again, because man, I was butt puckering this morning. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been bad. We would have like, oh, here, we're here for is, the live stream. It's only up from there, right? Yeah. And start the day like that. Because everything went perfect this week, other than that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, I don't come with a warranty, sorry. Yeah. But, so, <laughs> good question was, you know, especially you've, you've done the journey, you know, Ryan too, myself, you know, when do you think people should start making that jump into like starting to get deeper in the squeegees and changing the squeegees, different durometers, multi durometers? Do you, do you when should people wait, wait the jump to get into the stuff that we're teaching in this class, basically? Yeah, pretty yeah. much. <laughs> now, yeah. honestly, um, you can never like, I would say like get the very basics down, learn how to expose a screen, things like that. But once you get past those very basics, get into this stuff now because it's gonna be a lot easier to train yourself into it early than it is gonna be later. And go to, you know, join events like this, go to classes, get around other print shops. Like we learn stuff from each other yeah. all week. I learned how to degrease better, yep. learned how to put screens in drying cabinets better, yeah. learned how like tape tricks, you know, wipes, baby wipes. We learned all sorts of stuff this week. Yeah, exactly. And so Lee taught me stuff. It was awesome. Yeah, yeah. super crazy. Yeah. I, the amount of stuff that you turned around and said, like, I didn't know that. I was like, Holy shit. <laughs> he was so happy. I'm he so happy so I'm happy. teaching this guy stuff because I mean, I learned so much from him and I, I'm sure most of you watching the same thing, none of us would be here without this guy. So I mean, yeah, just crazy to hear him say that. Yeah. It's and been I, fun. So, and I can't stress what Ryan's talking about enough. You know, like one, get out there and try to learn from other people, but two, invest in yourself. You know, like I honestly will say for myself, the first like nine years of my screen printing journey, I was all in my crib like Lee all the time and like I didn't really expose myself enough. I invested in my first made lab class and that kind of just set me off on a road of going into every print shop, going to all these classes. And I can honestly say that the past year and a half has trumped my whole nine years of learning. So yeah. definitely invest in Learn in it right away and learn it right away. Start playing around with that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I the Stampin' Air Jeff, we helped him teach a class and he never printed with thin thread. And 
the next way. He's like, dude, I printed a job with this and I could change from a single stroke, I mean, from a double stroke to a single stroke. So you can pick up efficiencies like just by trying different things. Yeah. And for him, he's got the stamp, Stampinators all over his freaking press because he manufactures them. <laughs> right. So he actually just went back to standard mesh, but he didn't know that he could. If he needed to run faster for like a big print run, Fast. now he knows how to do it, you know? Plus yeah. the other thing too is like, and I'll say this first and foremost, going into a bunch of shops, it's not always gonna work in your shop, you know? And like, that's the cool thing it's about true. this industry. Like, I always make the joke, you know, we're screen printers, but more than anything, we're problem solvers. You know, we're just looking yes. at the problem that a customer is bringing us and we're gonna solve it for you, but we don't all have the same tools, you know? So your biggest tool is yourself. So if you can get your knowledge up by coming to something like this, going to a class, or even just reaching out, you know, like the three of us especially, we're always open for any questions we want to help, you know, that's one of the things Lee specializes in coaching, so yeah. never hesitate to reach out. Yeah, of course, I mean, like, my DMs are open to anybody, of course, they are a gong show a lot of the time, so I get to as many questions as I can, I'm sure it's the same deal with you, but we always try to do that stuff, um, there are private coaching things between myself and other people as well, there are so many cool free resources out yeah. there, there's of course, like, uh, my Rogue Printers Facebook group, there's 14,000 printers in there sharing stuff every single wow, day, that's awesome. it's incredible, um, you YouTube, of course, massive resource out there. And just, you know, getting on Google, find, just look around for stuff, man. That's how I learned so much of this stuff. When I started looking, uh, trying to solve problems in my shop, I would just deep dive Google. Um, and yeah, you can usually find the answer you're looking for if you're looking hard enough. Yeah, don't ever hesitate. When I'm usually laying in bed late at night trying to think of problems, I usually just think of Lee. You know, I, <laughs> whoa, I, DM him. I, his DMs. I don't know if that's what you're doing here. <laughs> hey, so MC, while we switch over so to yeah, this other, other camera, why don't you let us know if there's any other questions to wrap yeah, this thing up? Yeah, let's go back to the desk because uh, we got something fun now to show you. CC. So we're going to pull something up on the screen and we're going to create a poll right now in the comments. Um, it's going to be just choose left or right. You're gonna, we're going to put two prints on the screen right now and uh, we're going to see one of us printed. So me and Ryan printed these prints and we're going to see yeah. who won this thing. Yeah, you got to vote for visually what you think is the best print. So this is manually printed, yep. and we did it under base. We used these. These are both with the 157. Yep, 157 you know, carded cotton, cotton shirt. Yep. Um, and yeah, on the manual press. Yep, and with the overprint. Both with a pull stroke. And we basically made it as even as possible. It's just two different guys holding the squeegee. You guys got that pull up good? Yeah. Nice. So while we're so, answering a few kind of questions, why don't you all like vote? and then we'll display the results. Yeah, we'll display who's was who's. Can of corn, have we got any final questions here? Well, I mean, yeah, some people got some good questions, you know, and me personally, I've learned this around my journey, I guess you could say, uh, coming from a mandal frame, not really knowing too much, just watching videos, but like, when it comes to that base, right, obviously we want to get like the brightest vinyl color, top color, white, whatever the case is, right? Like, are you stressing that base to be super, super bright white when you're done? Or is that, what are you looking for? I mean, yeah, you're, the goal at the end of the day is to get it as bright as you can, but you also don't want to build it up too thick. So, I mean, it's going to come down to just, you know, using the right techniques, using the right supplies, using the right screens, all that type of stuff. Um, but, I mean, I've heard of some crazy stuff out there. Some people laying down, like, multi-layered underbases, things like that. Like, there's so many different things that you can do in this, and that's kind of the fun of screen printing for me because it's like you can endlessly try new stuff and get different results. Now, from your experience, like, obviously, like you said, there's stacking, there's different things. You could run in multi-print, double-hit it, print, flash hit, right? Have you noticed a difference in the PMS color when you do that? Oh, for sure, for sure. Certain ones have better coverage than others. It's gonna depend on your ink mixing system, of course. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely some transparency issues with some colors versus others. Yeah. Hey, so we got a question about the double squeegee, the action, action double squeegee. Maybe we should try that in one of the advanced classes. We do have questions. I have yeah, one sitting have on the one. shelf. Okay. I haven't used it yet. We I've didn't been waiting. Use it so far this week, yeah. but we are only about, we just started filming, so. Yeah, so I've, uh, I've had that sitting on the shelf for a little while. I planned on making a video at that, on, on that at some point. So yeah, this could be a good time to bust it out. When is the manual Stampinator coming out Ooh. for those manual printers? Ooh. That's a good question. Hey, by the way, the, the 250A, awesome press, great up, upgrades, but you said you do consulting with people. Yes. And when they buy that press, they get an hour with you, but you've only had like 10% of people sign up for that? Yeah, out of uh, all the people that have actually bought the press, I think like maybe, I don't know, 10, 15% of them actually followed through with the coaching calls so far. So I don't know, maybe they just want the press because it's black and it looks cool. No, good on them. If but you I mean, have bought that, you got to take advantage. Like you can ask anything. You yeah, know? the so, hour is yours to ask anything. I don't care if you want to ask print questions or you want to just ask me, you know what I ate for lunch. I don't give a shit. <laughs> I mean, how to make rad videos, like yeah. what kind of gear you're using. That time I mean, is that's yours. what I would do. <laughs> yeah, that time is yours to ask whatever you want. And, uh, you know, it's super beneficial, and some of the coaching clients I've had have had, you know, tremendous results. We were just talking to the boys yesterday. Yeah. I mean, like, huge, huge improvement, and yeah. that was, you know, 
a couple coaching calls we did with them and going from manual to auto and look at them now, they're killing it. Yeah, one of the things, and like me and Lee talk about this all the time, one of the big things we're trying to change in the industry and we want everybody to be a part of this, but like we want us to be a better community. You know, we're here for knowledge. We want to spread knowledge. There's no gatekeepers anymore, right? And like that's what we're trying to push. So like reach out, I can't stress that enough, you know? And everybody we've worked with, like we just said, the boys, there's a bunch of other people, amazing people in this world. Um, you know, we've only seen great results and it's cause at the end of the day, teamwork makes the dream work. So don't, don't hesitate, please. Okay, a couple things happening in Q1. So the manual stampinator, to circle back to that question, is coming out in Q1. We're gonna be showing it. I believe we're gonna really try to show it at the Long Beach Trade Show. But also that is when this course comes out, right? How do people get signed up for this course? Where do they learn more? Yeah, so click the link in the description below. Um, go fill out the form. It takes you to Roundhead's site and uh, they can, you guys can sign up. And once we are done making this thing and have it perfected, because it is going to be perfected, um, you'll get notified when it's available and uh, you can get in. Yeah, and it's also, we're gonna have different options when you take the course, so you can view it live, similar to this format, but a little bit different where you can actually interact with both of us, ask questions, or you can then take it later on the round at LMS yeah. on streamprinting.com. So yeah, we were doing it. the first run, watching the videos live with you guys, answering questions if you need, and then of course you can watch it back later on anytime you want. So it's gonna be very cool. It's gonna be fun to interact with people like that, I think. Yeah. I've never done anything like that, and I'm excited for it. It's been a lot of fun to, to be here up in this beautiful facility. Up, I've never been to Winnipeg before. No, yeah. not many people have. There's it's, no reason to come here. No, <laughs> Other you, than to come here. No, <laughs> no, it's also, if you like the cold, which I like the cold, it is a great place to go in the winter. And it's been beautiful. It's been like the, the air is clean, the water is great to drink right out of the tap. It's, yeah. I definitely I got beautiful sunsets every day on my beautiful property. Beautiful sunsets. Yeah. It's awesome. Been an awesome dog. Got yeah. to meet your dog, oh, Flash. Oh yeah, Flash. Flash yeah. is the best. Yeah. Love that little guy. Flash is the so, all right, yeah, Rick says, so, eager to see the Stampinator. Um, can, where can we attend training on autos? So, Made Lab, we specialize in training on automatic presses. We do an intro to rock class, which is uh, learn to rock. And that's basically, if you're coming from a manual to an auto, this guy helps me, me teach that one. Yeah. Miguel also helps. And we do a main to rock class where Brett and Tom, Miguel, kind of get more advanced into rock. And we're gonna be taking that on the road this year with the Major Rock Tour going all over. I think we should do a tour stop up here. Yeah, we, we should, should. that yeah. would be awesome. Life, eh? Major Rock Tour where you can actually come into the shop. It's about a day and a half course. We do something special to that shop. So yeah. up here, start thinking about that, Lee. What kind of cool project you'd like to show or something special? I got some ideas. Yeah. I got some ideas. I think you're entering a print <laughs> competition, right? Oh. I am entering a print competition right <laughs> yeah, away. So yeah, yeah we got to. We got a short amount of time to print something that's yeah. gonna be the most difficult thing I've ever made in my life. So <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> oh, and we gotta finish this course. We too, gotta do that too, yeah. In that yeah. same amount of time. Come down to the Rock Warehouse. Yeah, yeah they I also gotta get my Christmas rush warehouse. in the shop yeah, out of here. We're <laughs> dude, we got thousands and thousands of pieces backed up in there. I <laughs> yeah, dude, thank you so much. You shut entire production down all week yeah, long. Yeah, production's been shut down for like four days now, which is not ideal in the middle of Christmas rush, but thankfully I've got an awesome crew here in the shop. They're gonna come in Fridays and Saturdays for a little bit and we're gonna knock this stuff out. I got a whole 40 foot shipping container packed to the ceiling full of stuff that's gotta get out before Christmas. So it's gonna be a rough week for me next week. That's awesome. All right, we got any final questions before we take off? Uh, actually, let's let's show those results. Yeah, you ready let's to show see the, the results, results of our poll. We here. got over a hundred votes. We so. got hundred votes. Woo! Which Woo! one? And yeah, do you remember who's is who? Okay. Don't forget to vote for who's your favorite YouTube printer on. <laughs> oh, the left is ninety to nine. Ninety to nine. Ninety to nine. And who is the left? I where's the? Oh my god! Oh. Yes. <laughs> and the winner. Oh no! Yes! Oh, oh no. my god! Uh, yeah, okay, so we have a fun I, man. Not only is he now <laughs> the uh, world champ of the print off here, but he's also a world champion of snowmobiles. <laughs> <laughs> man, former, a, that's a. That's I want to know the because it was not where the one percent go. First of all, I want to know where the three votes go or the where the the one vote went. Yeah. Uh, so maybe it was my own vote. <laughs> yeah, maybe you had it open the whole time <laughs> because. It wasn't until we zoomed in on that print where you really told it. Because you yeah. looked at my print, and you're like, oh, damn, we're, that was pretty good. Yeah, we were looking at them side by side, and it was tough. But once we got it under the macro, and we like color corrected the shots, got them exactly the same, yeah. then we saw a huge difference. And man, I haven't printed on a manual in quite a while, and I was, I was kind of nervous. But going up against this guy, the guy that taught me how to print, but I guess. Uh, but I'll tell you why. why. Why was yours better? 
Well, number one was adjusting that pressure. That yes, was the biggest one. Absolutely. Right? I was going, you're like, dude, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, his, his technique is, burpees. he's got a lot of <laughs> a lot of power down on that thing. And I was like, you got to back that off a bit. And yeah. obviously that's where we saw the difference. And uh, absolutely crazy. That's awesome. I uh, I guess the student has become the master. Hey, uh, <laughs> Daniel son. Daniel son. Uh, I said that several times this, like, this, this week. Oh. This has been a lot of fun. I got to yeah. ask one thing though. Okay. Because I was Canicorn. blown away about it when we were doing screens and stuff. I, and like I said, last year when I was here, I learned a lot from you too, right? I think obviously you're going to get it if you come to the class, but can you give them a little teaser about the emulsion? Like, what do you like to use? Like, what do you, Oh, emulsion. Opinion? How important is that? Yeah, emulsion's huge. Absolutely huge. So that's one thing we are going to go pretty in depth in the course on is uh, your screen prep and screen setup. EOM, and EOM tension. is like EOM and tension are probably one of the biggest factors in getting the results that we're getting here. So we're going to go in there. We're going to measure it. We're going to show you guys how to measure it. Um, there's a lot involved in that before you ever touch a squeegee. And I think, to be honest, I think that is the most important part of it. What what tools to use and how yep. to get those tools. Yep. And it's not breaking the bank in the process, which is awesome. Consistency. Oh, there's so many hacks that I learned here too. We did yeah. some really cool videos yep. showing some of the hacks that, that Lee's done and it's been really cool to see those little efficiency gains. Yeah. Good job with all that Thank stuff. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Hacks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know there were hacks. I was just, it's just stuff I do every day. Yeah. <laughs> what, why does this dude have shades on indoors? We, we because must I'm ask this. I'm surrounded by so many stars. <laughs> time. It's so bright everywhere I go. You can't see how bright this future is. Jeez, he's changing the game. Dang. <laughs> Woo. Oh, that's uh, good. Dang. Come yeah. on, people. Plus, I got cameras in these babies. I'm watching you at all times. So be careful. <laughs> all right. Well, everyone really liked it. You know, thank you again, Lee, for having us up here. Thank you for the Rhyonet team for helping put this all together. Yeah. Decided to finish up this course and get it all edited up. You're gonna have a blast editing this, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a rough little while. I think my next like three, four months are gonna be, uh, it's gonna be tough, but worth it, man. I love yeah. this stuff. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. So, so. thank you again for having us up. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you guys for coming yeah. up and stuff, and especially you, Ryan, I mean like, Thank you just for everything you've done for me, for my shop, for me putting this stuff on YouTube, and just for all of us watching. I think like most of us watching, most of us wouldn't be here without you. So thank you for that. You are welcome. And we have an awesome team that made it happen around it. So thank you everyone for helping it out and, and for powering the print and learning how to print better because my goal in life is to not let crappy t-shirts survive. Yeah. And there are so many of them out yeah. there. Oh. Death to bad prints <laughs> yeah. and, to, and death to DTF, by the yeah. way. <laughs> oh. Oh, so please take advantage of any of this information and make better prints. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well great job. Oh, yeah, man. Thank you. This was Thank awesome. you very much. That's great. Thank cool. you. Mother. Thank you, Zach. Yeah. Everyone. Oh, comic release. Yes. Comic release. There we go. We there we go. There we go. All right. Didn't burn the shop down. Uh, <laughs> Great answer to the question on the sunglasses. The number one speaker. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, we good. killed it. And of course, I'm going to put this video on my channel. It's going to live there. This live stream is not going to disappear. So if you guys have any comments, questions, anything else um, beyond this live stream, drop them in there and I will answer those for you the best that I can. And be sure to subscribe. Yeah, and of course, yeah. subscribe. Damn it. Hit, the <laughs> hit, it button. hit, hit it that now. button. Hit that hit, like button. Hit the like too. button. Hit the subscribe. All that good stuff. All right. Thank you all. Thank you guys. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Yeah, you do.